uh, can you give us a basic overview of who you are, any occupations or hobbies that you are passionate about? <laughs> sure. It's a big question. So my name is Ash, and I am a non-binary person living in Portland, Oregon. I got my Bachelor's of Fine Arts at Portland State University just this past June, and that was to get me to where I am now, which is in a master's program to teach art education. So art is my biggest hobby and passion in life, and specifically mixing that with mental health and how we can use it as a coping skill and as a tool and a vehicle for self-growth and the growth of our communities is really important to me. How do you use art as a tool for self-expression, healing, and awareness of mental health? Um, do you have any specific examples that you'd like to share? Hmm. For myself, um, it's changed over the years. When I was younger, I started drawing um, just graphite drawings of like people's whose music I listened to. I just started doing portraiture. Um, music has always al also had this intricate tie to my artwork um, and my healing. So from a very young age, like the fourth grade, I started doing portraiture um, to people who felt really important to me. And so now, and during my BFA, just this past year, I kind of moved to a more um, socially engaged way of working. So I would interview people and talk to them about this last topic was like words that had got unsaid for them in their lives. And so it kind of allowed this connection between me and another person to kind of flourish. And then through that, we talked about usually mental health came up in some capacity because just because of the topic that we're speaking of, something would come up. Um, and so for me, the process of going through my art process of uh, I photograph them and then I sketch that and then I put that on a big like drawing, usually about this size of this. Um, and then like the actual act of me painting has always been something that I, it gives me time and space to also work through my own things, things that have happened with me and also like space for that person and the conversation that I had, it kind of lets me process that instead of holding on to it. Um, I've also had smaller like daily sketchbooks that I would do just color palettes in. Um, I can show you one of those. And then I would do, I also like a lot of text-based art. So I would write text over like a color palette that I would make for the day. And those are really fun to look back on too because I, I can feel more of the state of mind that I was in visually like seeing like the color palette and like what I chose to represent that day um yeah I can get that out if you want you show it <laughs> well we'll do that in the video okay <laughs> so teachers in the city of Portland have recently walked out of the classroom in protest with their teaching environment as an educator yourself do you have any insight you would like to share on the subject Sure. Um, yeah, and definitely now going into this field, it's a conversation that we regularly have in my classes in my grad program. Um, the school I'm placed at right now is actually I'm at a Tigard school, so I'm not daily being affected by the strike. But my a lot of my colleagues are, and it is something that we talk about often. I'm fully supportive of what's happening. Uh, I definitely would be doing the same, um, stand in solidarity with them because the things that they're asking for are not <laughs> outrageous at all. It is, it all comes back to the experience that our students are getting. And if, you know, people are trying to play it that like the teachers are complaining that their work environment isn't okay, but it's not their work environment, it's like student environment, <laughs> you know? So it's like if teachers aren't having their needs met in the classroom to be able to teach fully, students aren't fully getting the things that they need to learn. So yeah, that's kind of that's kind of where we're at. And the the district is definitely trying to vilify uh, teachers in this moment, which is not cool. <laughs> yeah. So um, yeah, it's kind of I wouldn't say it's scary going into this profession. It's scary for other reasons. Um, but it's more inspiring to me, the solidarity that there is between teachers and that I am going into a field who 
knows the value of what they have to offer students and that they'll fight for that. Um, we, it's happened in Vancouver recently. I think Tiger might strike later this year. So there's just different, um, yeah, teachers all around are kind of like, hey, <laughs> actually, like we're in the situation we're in because things are being misappropriated, funds are being misappropriated. And if you want to complain about the way our students are, their their behaviors, that's like a big buzzword. It's like student behavior, student management, and everything from what I've heard from teachers and also being a nanny through COVID, through the pandemic, those first few years, it's just different. Kids are different. They've lived through <laughs> like a massive world thing um, and they need different things. And we need our district to realize that because our teachers certainly have, I think. Okay, last question. Is there anything else you'd like to share or expand upon that we already talked about? Mm -hmm. I think your questions are pretty good and in depth. Um, I think, yeah, I think we covered everything. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, we're 12 minutes, so oh, that's cool. <laughs> what you need to cut. Okay, cool. Yay. <laughs>